Hey everybody, welcome to 2022. The first video I'd like to do this year is something that I've been meaning to do for a while now. Um, in 2021, I acquired quite a few new inbox items that I just never had the time to open. Um, and in the vein of Thomas McRella, because I know he does a lot of these, I thought it would be fun if I do it all in one big video and it would kind of push me to open everything because I've been kind of procrastinating on this a bit. So, uh, without further ado, let's just get started. Okay, so the first item in this unboxing is actually not new in box. So I, I, I guess I kind of lied there. Uh, call me out if you want. But this one came from a friend. Thomas Wooden Railway, um, as I shout out in the beginning of the video. If you uh, keep tabs with him on Twitter, you would have seen a couple months back he got this lot for like $100 with a bunch of stuff in box that was like 2000s, I think some was even 90s. Um, and I had, or I had known he already had a rescue hospital because he actually did an unboxing of one on one of his big unboxings. So what happened was I was just talking to him about the lot he got and he was, I think he mentioned the fact that he was going to sell some stuff off. So I'm like, I'll buy some of it off of you because, I mean, the hospital I didn't have. Um, and he said, sure. So this is from Thomas Wooden Railway and it's not noon box, but it's, I mean, it has the box and I'm pretty sure it's in good condition. So enough talking, let's just open it. Actually, let's look at the box first. Because the back is really nice. Like I just, I really love these learning curve 2000 era boxes. Like I know a lot of people have nostalgia for the 90s eras because I mean that's that's when they were born. Um, but me personally, I'm a 2000s kid. I was born in 2003, um, and this is the kind of stuff I saw in the stores back in the day. And I mean, just this this type of packaging just has so much charm and. I really, I just really like the sets they did on the back of these. Like they're really eye-catching, and they would entice you to get the other items in the picture. And I, I, like I said, of course there was the '90s had their own layouts on the back, but I don't know. There's something about these that are that are really nice. I guess because they take up like the entire back of the box was really enticing. So yeah, um, thank you for choosing Learning Curve. You're welcome. Let's just get this out of the box. Okay, so we got something in tissue paper first. I, it, from the looks of it, it looks like a Herald. We, yeah, let's just open it first. I don't know why I'm putting it off. Uh, when I'm recording this, it is January, um, and I just got this in the mail, uh, I don't know, like a week ago or so. So, just to uh, put a time frame on this video. And that is a regular, no, I don't want to say new style Herald because I mean, after 92, Herald was basically the same until 2010, 20, no, 2011 when they, gave, when they updated to the CGI one. Um, but yeah, uh, I already have a Herald like this because I have Herald Telepad, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with having another. Unlike Chase, I really don't have any dislike for Harold. We've got a regular six inch piece of track. And then you can see it back there. We've got the hospital itself. And looks like the ramp for the hospital is coming out the side there. So there we go. Um, I, I got one of these last year when I got my recycling center, but again, it's, it's always good to have multiple, um, and especially with roadway pieces because they're so hard to get. And now if we turn it on its front, you can see the ambulance in there. If I could uh, get it out, that'd be great. There we go. There's the ambulance. That's cool. I'm not sure what uh, version this is. The box is dated 2002. I don't know if this is the 2002 version or not, though. I can't remember. Because I, I know after 2002 they changed it, but I can't remember if this is 
that the original or if it's the updated. Um, but yeah, it's still it's really cool. It's a nice little vehicle. It says ambulance on the bottom. Here is the hospital. Um, and it's in pretty good shape. All things considered. So yeah, um, let's just put it together real quick. There's the track right there. Put the ambulance inside. And then Harold comes and lands on top. And the ambulance rolls out to the rescue. So that is really cool. Thank you very much, Chase. And um, I will be sure to use this in a layout or in a set, whichever I do next. Okay, so moving on to the second item in this video. Um, it's a bit of a smaller item, but it's the first one that is actually uh, new in box, so that's pretty cool. We have got Victor and the engine repair car. Um, and this is, I did not buy this myself. I did not get this off eBay. I got this from a friend who bought it from me from a store that they went to. You can, oh shoot, the camera, sorry. Uh, right there you can see called Evans. Um, I got it from a friend, Tank Engine Thomas. They uh, went to this store sometime last year in 2021 and uh, asked me and a couple other friends if we wanted anything and this uh, sparked my interest. So he uh, decided to buy it for me. So I am very appreciative of that. Uh, can we just talk about real quick how thick the spare parts car is? I did not realize this until I um, got this from Parker in the mail, but holy crap look how thick that is and then Victor is just there's like a whole that there's like two millimeters of plastic that uh, Victor needs to sit on to look normal in the package. I mean that is insane um, This is a later item from the box is dated 2011, but I'm pretty sure this came out in I mean the box is dated 2010 But I'm pretty sure this came out in 2011 uh, but what I'm trying to get at is it's kind of a more boring box uh, from the later learning curve era. There's no character card and all. So uh, let's just uh, crack it open. Um, this is, I'm pretty sure, my first learning curve Victor. Because uh, the Victor I have is a Mattel one. If I'm remembering that correctly, I'm pretty sure. I have a Mattel Victor, a Mattel Kevin, and a learning curve hero. Um, so, kind of varied there. I, never, I did not get the Hero of the Rails characters when uh, they were new, at least in Wooden Railway. I was not um, big on collecting Wooden Railway at that uh, time period, and then when I started to, they weren't really um, big interests in mine. So, look at this. It's a little battery uh, replacement instruction. It's pretty neat. Obviously not too interesting, but I always like to keep stuff like that just cuz I don't know I, I don't like throwing away this stuff like I will definitely keep this box Even if I have no use for it. All right, how do we get this out of here? Okay, there we go Again look at that <laughs> That is ridiculous Okay, so here is Victor that is clean. There's like no goose at all in the paint. No chips, no nothing. And like the paint application on the later learning curve items is really clean. So like this looks really nice. I gotta admit, there's his face. It's uh, based on that test mold, I guess, that they made for the merchandise. And so it looks very similar to the Trackmaster and take and play faces. Um, very nice. This is from, you can see by that code, 2010. Good stuff, I really like that. And then here we have the spare parts car, which seems to be put in, yeah, it's put in the box backwards, um, interestingly enough. And yeah, here we go again. Look at how wide this is, like that is insane. I did not realize that until I got this. <laughs> And then you press the button on top, and these lights light up. 
I do really like how this is a spare parts car for engines and they include wooden railway styled wheels in it. That is very cool. Uh, that's a very cool touch. I do really like that. And then the lamps that light up are neat. It's definitely different. Um, like, I don't... It's not exactly... It's kind of a silly piece of rolling stock. You know, like, at least the, the its appearance because, you know, Victor shunts flatbeds in the Steamworks. Not a car that looks like this, but it's cool. And I mean, it definitely matches the wooden railway style. And I, uh, I like that. I can't tell. It looks like the bottom part is wood, and this part where it says Steamworks is plastic, and the whole top is plastic. And the chassis is obviously wood. But, uh, it's, uh, a bit plastic fantastic, as Leo Video would say. Holy, yeah, that is a, that gives you a good, uh, visualization of how thick that car is. I mean, that's really it to say about this item. It's, uh, pretty cool. I know I wanted it for a long time. Like, I definitely wasn't desperate for it, but, uh, Parker happened to stumble across it in that store, so I was like, you know, why not? So that is Victor and the engine repair car. Alright, the next item we're going to be looking at is a bit of a more uh, obscure item, I'd say anyways. Uh, and you can see it right here, it is the battery charging station. Um, I believe when it was released in 2013, I think, it was a Toys R Us exclusive item. But you can see right here by this sticker that I did not get it at Toys R Us. Uh, Toys R Us has been closed for quite some time now. I got it this past summer at Entertainment Junction during the Entertainment Extravaganza. This was one of the few items that they had left in terms of Thomas Wooden Railway. Um, I believe they had like, I can't, actually I can't really remember the other things they had. I know they had a couple track packs left. They had one other destination, I think it was like the Fossil Discovery. So something I wasn't too interested in compared to this. And since they had this, um, and talking with some friends, I was like, you think this is worth it? And they were like, well, you're probably never going to find it again, so you might as well. So I decided to get it. Um, not exactly the uh, most uh, essential item you would need in your collection, but it's it's cool. It's, it's definitely different, um, and I appreciate it in that regard. It's got this cool feature here where if you press this button, uh, the generator will light up which is pretty neat uh, just take a quick look at the back obviously the Mattel boxes are never too interesting on their backs just pretty pretty basic unlike the learning curve stuff they never really show any background scenes unfortunately but you can see how the destination works you just um, lower the magnet and attach it to Stafford and you can pretend he's charging. It says, Stafford is an electric engine on the island of Sodor. He runs on batteries instead of coal. Recharge him by attaching Stafford to the battery charging station and push the button to watch the sparks fly. So yeah. And then it shows that you get three pieces on the side. It's pretty neat that uh, this comes with an exclusive Stafford. It definitely didn't have to do that. Um, but they did. It's not exactly the most uh, necessary or realistic variation you could provide. It's a Stafford with a charging logo on the side of him. Like, we never saw that from him in the show, so it's a bit uh, peculiar, but nonetheless, still a interesting uh, inclusion. Should've... Oh, okay, there we go. Unlike Thomas Wooden Railway, when he does his unboxings, I try not to destroy the boxes that, these, that this stuff comes in. I like to preserve it. And, yep. As I suspected, there are screwdriver... Uh, there are screws holding this in, as a lot of Mattel... Uh, Mattel Destinations did so. Let's get a nice... If you know Leo Cavillo, let's get a nice screwdriver shot in. This is uh, very satisfying to watch in his videos, as long as the exposure uh, doesn't go through the roof. There's a second. Man, 
that might be out of focus. I can't really tell from the viewfinder. I apologize if it was. Oh wow, look at that. That was uh, very simple to take out. Zero damage to the box. I do like the sky backdrop that they would give the Mattel destinations. It's pretty uh, unique. Nice little nod to the CGI series. So it looks like Stafford is strapped down to just the piece of track, which that's pretty different. Usually they would attach it into the box, but uh, not this time, apparently. So let's just quickly cut this. This was the only wooden railway thing I got from Entertainment this past summer. I got uh, two Bachman items as well. I got Spencer and Oliver. Oh, okay, actually, I take that back. This is the only thing I bought from Entertainment that was Wooden Railway, but I bought a couple things off of some people who were at the show selling some things. Like I got a 2003 Henry and a Patchwork Hero, I believe. Uh, this destination is very small, I gotta say. Um, you don't really realize it until you take it out of the box, but it's very thin. And it's also kind of plain. Like, I would I would really appreciate if there was detail on this wall, or this wall. It's uh, a little disappointing that it's just bare wood, because literally all the only colors you have are this dark green and the wood color. Wow. Here is Stafford, and geez, I missed this. This is a 2013 Stafford, right? So he is very glossy, and like, it doesn't feel like it's wood, but it just is a very nice feeling. It's very smooth, no like imperfections whatsoever. We had it good, we really did. Because, I mean, as most people know, the later Mattel era wooden railway stuff, they, it started to look more rough. I think in 2015, they stopped the gloss um, on the paint, or on top of the paint, so everything looked more exposed. Like, you could see the wood more clearly. Um, and personally, I didn't like that too much. I can understand why they did that, because maybe people didn't believe that the stuff was wooden, um, but I liked it better when it was like this. So here's the piece of track. Um, in typical Mattel fashion, they usually put nubs on the pieces of track that come with the destinations. It's a nice screwdriver hole right in the middle of that piece of track, so I definitely will not forget which uh, destination it goes with. Alright, so I guess let me demonstrate how this works. So you've got this magnet that comes out, kind of like a crane. Oh, shoot. It's not focused on camera. I'm sorry about that. Let me move the camera down some more so we can get a closer look. So there's a boom gate on the end here, which is kind of interesting. Don't quite understand it. I guess if you don't want engines crashing in the staffer while he's charging. Um, that you can uh, attach the magnet to Stafford, I guess reel it in some so it's a tight connection and then you can press the button back here and Stafford is being charged. So yeah, um, that seems to be it really with this destination. Definitely, like I said, one of the more unique ones. There's an on off switch back here so you could stop the, the uh, lights and sounds if you so please. It's definitely one of the more interesting ones. That is partially why I never picked it up. Also, just I never collected too many of the Mattel destinations because uh, they were very expensive. But I am pl pleased to have this one now because of enter the thanks to Entertainment Junction for still having them. So yeah, uh, that's the battery charging station. Let's move on to the next item. Alright, so the next item we're going to be taking a look at is again on the more obscure side. Um, but at the same time, I feel like this is also a very common item. Back when I used to watch YouTube all the time, before I had a channel, uh, I saw a lot of people that had this item. And this has definitely never been a huge desire of mine to get the trees on track, but it is very cool to have uh, now. And if you see the price sticker right here. I got it at a place called the Train Loft, which I discovered with a couple friends this summer. Um, and they 
had a lot of old wooden railway, which was very shocking to find in 2021, for sure. So, uh, this is one of the items I decided to get, and you can see the picture on the back, it's pretty cool. It's got Scarlowy, like, on the front. You turn it to the side, shows it again. This is a clickety-clack version from 2001. Alright, so, let's just get into this. This looks to be a pretty simple unboxing. Just gotta pull it out. Oh look, it's all assembled. Nice. Seems to be nothing else inside. We've got um, a pamphlet. As per usual, this one is from 2001, just like the box. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, that's... That was a pretty simple unboxing. Here he is. It's the whole entire thing uh, already assembled, which is pretty cool. So there we go. Um, oh shoot. Underneath is pretty basic. Got grass detailing on the side. It's kind of like a bigger, more bulky version of the bumpy track. And I believe how this works is if you press... Maybe... Maybe not. I thought if you pressed on the danger sign, the trees would go down. Hmm. Oh, never mind. You don't press, you slide it. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, shoot. Looks like it works. It's irreversible. It works either way. That's... So, I mean, that's really it. Uh, that's the trees on track. It's a pretty basic destination, um, but it's definitely cool. And I have a lot of nostalgia for it for seeing it in people's videos. Uh, so it's very cool to finally have. Um, and yeah, that's about it for this part. Alright, the next item I have in this unboxing is one which I once again got from a friend. Uh, not all of these unboxing are from others, uh, but it seems to be the trend in the ones I've shown so far. This one I got from my friend William Paul Teske, and he got it from, as you've probably heard uh, by now, the uh, Hatteras Island Toy Store, which I've actually been to myself, but he bought this for me in 2019 before I had ever been, because um, he offered to buy some stuff for me and a couple others, and this is what I wanted. This is also before I had a barrel loader, because if you know my uh, content recently, you know last year I got a lift and load set, which includes a barrel loader. Uh, but I did, obviously in 2019, did not anticipate getting a lift and load set, so this is technically my second barrel loader. Uh, but I don't, I don't really care about that. Uh, this one is brand new, the one that I got in the lift and load set had a decent amount of damage, I will not lie. So it's cool to have. Um, and you can see on the side the picture of it there. On the back, a nice little scene with James and Henry, the trees and stuff, and the workmen. Pretty neat. The box is dated, if you can see that, 2006. So it's kind of near the end of uh, the barrel loader's lifespan. But let's get into this. So the barrel loader for me. Uh, like I said, this is my second one. My first one is from the lift and load set, but before 2021, I did not have one. The barrel loader to me has always felt like an essential item, like something that everybody has, but I never had it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess that was just because of what I got as a kid. None of it really included the barrel loader. Ooh, look at that. We got a pamphlet. It's pretty nice. This one is dated 2006, like the box, um, and this is not exactly new to me. I have a decent amount of 2006 pamphlets, but it's still nice to have. Uh, but what I was saying was, nothing I had gotten as a kid really had the barrel loader, so uh, I never really had a, a reason to have it, per se. Uh, I mean, I did have Toby's Windmill, which has a barrel loader built into it, but I, I wouldn't exactly count it. Okay, this is... This is uh, pretty tightly packed in here, so I'm trying my best to get it out gently because I don't want to ruin the box. Let's see. 
We got the barrels and the track piece coming out. So we get a six inch piece of track, nice and fresh. You gotta love that. The barrels and this uh, white tissue paper. I will get to them. Here comes the main event, the barrel loader itself. Ooh, look at that. That is very nice. It's not every day you can get something new in box um, that is this old these days. It's getting harder and harder by the year. So it's nice to have these moments still to bring back some childhood memories. This is in very good shape, like I said. Um, and yeah, a lot better shape than the other one I have. It's certainly cool to have. And I, uh, the barrel loader is one item I don't really have too much of a problem with having multiple of. It's a versatile piece. Now here's the barrel car. Let's get that out of its uh, little plastic. I just love the way that this stuff was packaged, like with so much care, everything was individually wrapped. This is a great experience um, to live through this as a kid, honestly. Got a nice blue barrel car. My second. Here is the track. Let's put the barrel car on it. And finally, we've got the barrels. I feel bad destroying this packaging. It's just too nice, but it is what must be done. So we got flour, oil, and I think the last one is molasses. Yes. I know earlier versions of the barrel loader had corn as one of them. It's kind of interesting that they changed that. I'm not entirely sure why, but I guess it was for a good reason. Maybe corn seemed too American, so they decided to change it. Here we've got all the barrels loaded up. If I got my other barrels out right now, I could get a pretty nice chain of them going. But just to give you a quick demonstration, in case you've never seen this before, there you go. One barrel loaded, and two. And then the barrel car looks like this. And I gotta say, the blue and yellow combination is great. Looks very nice. Just like the purple and red of the 90s barrel car. So yeah. Also on the side, they've got the exact same three barrels painted, which is cool. But that is the barrel loader. Um, it's a classic destination, one that I did not have for a long time, even though I felt like I should have, but I just didn't. But now I have two, so I mean, no reason to complain there. It's pretty awesome. Thank you very much, Will, for buying that for me. Um, and we will move on to the next item.